Hello my friends, welcome once again to Faith Walk 101. We are so glad that you could join us. You know, do you find uh, that it's hard for you to fit into this world? You have a hard time uh, just uh, finding your place here? Well, if you're in Christ, you should. Uh, but we want to talk about uh, surrendering to Christ completely uh, and just allowing the power of the Spirit that lives in us to lead us. When you surrender to God, and you, uh, when you surrender to God, you're going to want to obey Him. Uh, There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. When you completely surrender to Him, you will want to obey Him. So when you obey God, you're going to experience His love. You're going to experience this love of God working in your life. It's going to be something that will change your life forever. It will be the, pay, the peace that passes all understanding. But just because you obey God, that does not mean everything will go the way that you want it. Uh, we want to be used by God to glorify God, to let the world know that we belong to God. And so um, we love God and we want all those around us to come to know Him. And the way that that happens is when we allow, completely surrender to Him and allow that Spirit to, to work through us. The Bible says the conclusion of the matter, fear God and keep His commandments. This is the duty of some people. No, the Bible says all mankind. All mankind. And there will be a day that every knee will bow, every knee, and make that confession that Jesus is Lord, the Son of God. Uh, so, the, uh, the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. And when we say fear, what we mean is this, this reverence of his word. Uh, but when we surrender to him, we'll, we will want to obey him. We will reverence his word. So when we hear his word, we obey it, we respond to it, and that's when we really experience his love. So uh, now that we are in Christ, we no longer belong to ourselves, okay? First Corinthians 6, 19. We no longer belong to ourselves. Well, what happened? Well, we were bought with a price. Find that in First Corinthians 6, 20. So you are no longer yourselves. You belong to Christ. And that's a wonderful thing because we can't fix ourselves. We can't save ourselves. And we needed a Savior. And that was Jesus Christ. Uh, so in Romans 8, chapter 8, and verse 5 through 7, it says, A person without the Spirit of God, their mind is an enemy against God. If a person is not in Christ, their mind, their life, their behavior is an enemy against God. And that's something that's very important to remember. But we who are in Christ, who have surrendered to God, we want to obey Him. Our mind and our behavior is not uh, uh, enemy against him. And uh, first, um, so what the, uh, the uh, Holy Spirit wants to do is work through us. Um, the enemy wants to work against God, but uh, the way we live, our behavior when we're in Christ should prove uh, who, who God is just by the way we live because what he's doing, he's working through us. But the enemy is working against God through their behavior, and we see that in their actions. So God works through our frail bodies to reveal his power. That's what he does, because our bodies are very frail. We haven't received our new bodies yet. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 9, uh, Paul says, God's grace is sufficient for all believers. And that's what uh, when uh, Paul was praying for, changes in his life for things to be removed so he could serve God better to be strengthened and God's answer was his grace is sufficient and that's the same for all of us but regardless of what we want what we desire or how we think things should be God says his grace is sufficient and he goes on to say Paul says his power not, not Paul's power God's power is made perfect and how is it made perfect? In our weakness, in our frail bodies. In these frail bodies who they can't do hardly anything, God's power is made, is seen through, is made perfect 
uh, through our weakness. So Paul said, therefore, this is what Paul says, because God's power is made is seen through our weakness and that we want to obey God, we want to surrender to God, we want to experience his love, he says, this is what I do. He says, therefore, I boast all the more gladly in my weakness. Because when I'm weak, he's strong. The world sees him. He says, I'm boasting about the power of God. Not my power, but his power. So that Christ's power rests on us. So his power rests on us when we rest in him. <laughs> and so what we do, we surrender to him. We're resting in him. And the world is seeing his power because the Holy Spirit wants to work through us. But uh, the Holy Spirit can't work through us if we are working against it. So, uh, this power that we see is from the Holy Spirit that's working through us. This is all about Christ, what Christ has done for us. It's not about what we can do. It's what he, He's done for us. The work of the cross, our salvation, that was all the work of Jesus Christ. So, it was His grace. Uh, the only way uh, there, there is to God is through Him, through Christ. There's only one way. And uh, when we surrender, we rest, and we allow, and we obey God, and we experience the peace that passes all understanding. There's only one way to God, my friend. So the only way to get uh, to God, the only way to get this square peg in a round hole, the only way that can be done is that the square peg has to be reshaped. <laughs> it's the only way it's going to work. Uh, so God is the potter and we are the clay. And all we are are the work of his hands. That's it. He shapes us. He's the one that makes the square peg fit through the round hole. You find that in Isaiah 64 verse 8. Isn't that wonderful? All we have to do is let the potter work in our lives. And you know, if you've ever seen one shape uh, put on a, work on a, a potter's wheel, they take that clay and they throw it and they knead it and they rub it around. And uh, because what they want to do, they want to get that pottery shaped in a way that it can be used. And uh, what happens is it turns out to be a wonderful plate or a bowl or a cup, something that you drink out of. It can be used only after the potter shapes it. And that's the only way that a square peg is ever going to fit through a round hole and work. Thank you, my friends, for joining us on Faith Walk 101. Hope this lesson has been encouraging to you.